Hey guys, what's up? Sorry that I have not posted any videos as of late. I've not been going to any races. It's been cold. We had some snow. But you might be wondering what I'm sitting in. Which happens to be a new project. It's not really new, but it's something that I'm working on. That I've been waiting on parts for. And I got some in today. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of an unboxing for what I've got. And show you guys what I already have. Ready to go for this. I'll give you a hint. It's a truck. There have been a few YouTubers already do builds on one of these. Which I did not know before I bought the truck. But one of those YouTubers that has already built one of these, which is very similar to the one that I have, is Matt Havel from Sloppy Mechanics. I'm sure you guys know who he is. A 2007 Chevy Colorado single cab two-wheel drive you might be able to see that the uh, fuel filler neck is hanging down there I'm about ready to pull the bed off pull the fuel tank out do a little bit more work in the back end I have got boxes of all brand new headlights tail lights third brake light all ready to go inside of the truck I've already purchased uh, let me get my phone my flashlight a driver's side seat that was in pretty good shape got rid of the rips and tears that were in the other seat not sure how long these seats are gonna last but they're in here for now dash is all bone stock not done anything to it I've not really touched the truck other than just a couple things you can see that I took the interior out already got rid of the disgusting floor liner that was in it it didn't have carpet it was a work truck so it had one of those little rubber mats inside it's gone actually washed the interior got it all cleaned up it's actually pretty nice headliner is nice took the cloth off of the visors because they were pretty disgusting the outside of the truck is actually in really really good shape it's got a couple little dents in it it's got one little spot right here where I guess some water may have gotten in the rocker but other than that it's uh for a work truck, it's in pretty good shape. It's got some dents right here in the bed. And something got into it right here. But no big deal. Somebody hit the bumper, but that's coming off anyway. Tailgate and everything's in pretty good shape. Like I said, I've got using it for storage at the moment in the back of it because I'm not doing anything back there. But let's move up to the front. And I'll show you a little bit of what I've already done. And you can see that... Uh, that is not the motor that came in this vehicle. I've got a 5.3. It's pretty nasty. Might not be the one staying in it, but it's the one I'm using for mock-up right now. I've already got the current performance motor mounts set up and put on there. I've got the factory mounts cut so they will clear, for the most part, clear the exhaust which I'm still working on how I'm going to run it. There's the other side, a whole lot more room.
and like I said I've not really done a whole lot you can still see the factory computer there basically all I've done is oops, another sneak peek of the transmission I pulled the factory engine out because this right here is actually I mean that's how it was in the truck top of it was off everything was out of it just basically torn apart like this Transmission should still be good. Here's my hood. Here is, since you've probably already noticed it, the transmission I've got. It was built by a local shop for a buddy of mine. A buddy of mine ended up not using it. So I got it from him for a pretty good deal. He sold me the transmission. Also sold me the PTC torque converter. and TCI Outlaw shifter that will be going in it. So what else do I got? I've got boxes. Might be able to guess what that box is seeing of the size of it and that it says ICT billet on it. More boxes. Big Jags box. Also got a couple of, yeah, I told you, my garage is disgusting. Header, or not headers, but exhaust manifolds there that probably won't get used. I'm probably going to find some factory truck manifolds. And this box. I'll be opening all these boxes in this video so you guys can see what we've ordered so far. This one right here, you might be able to see. Terminator X So we're gonna be running Holly on this. All right, so here we go with box number one I'm Using my little eBay listing booth here to give us a little bit more light This is the Holly Terminator X setups but this is definitely my first one all right you open the box here's what it looks like as soon as you open it so let's see it's definitely going to be our main harness there looks nice all loomed really well looks like the split loom okay that is an injector harness maybe that's yeah, that's for both. So that's both injector harnesses, not just one. Okay, this here. That's going to be the power harness for the main power. You can see the power wires in there and the straps to. There is our. Display screen. My knife's pretty dull, so takes a bit to cut with. Get a little stylus in here. It's pretty smart. They've actually got this in here backwards, so it's not up against the display. So I'll pop this booger out of there. There's a display. You can mount that to your dash. They supply, looks like some double-sided little 
tabs to mount that with. Let's get a close look at the display. It's pretty nice, a little handheld. I've had, I've actually had a Phytech setup on my old Vega that I had. I had a 73 Vega that I put a Phytech fuel injection system on. And it had a handheld very similar to it, a little display, but it had plugs. And something I didn't like was the plugs because I always felt like it was going to come unplugged and I wasn't going to have my readings and stuff. So I wasn't going to see the information that I needed to see. And that kind of always worried me. So I'm glad that that's made on there and not, you don't unplug it. Here is the O2 sensor that they supply you with. It's just a Bosch uh, O2 sensor, wideband. Not sure what this is. Looks like that's maybe, yeah, that's a plug for that. It's an adapter plug, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, another piece of wiring. I believe this is for the inputs and outputs. Would be my guess. So you can wire up different accessories as you like to it. That right there looks like it's going to be O2 bung to weld on to put the O2 sensor into the exhaust. Terminator X sticker. Definitely be putting that on the truck. Uh, one thing I'm thinking about doing, I don't know if you guys follow Cletus McFarland. It's not his real name, his real name's Garrett, but he has a channel. His channel name's Cletus McFarland. Excuse me. And he has a Corvette that he calls Ruby. Well, on the back of that car, he's got what people refer to as a sticker ball. And what I'm thinking about doing is kind of following the same principle and doing a sticker bomb on the tailgate of the truck. Because there does seem to be a few white Colorados out there right now. And until I decide to either paint it or put a wrap on it, I thought, meh. Why not just throw like a sticker bomb on the back so everybody knows whose it is. But anyway, there's the uh, there's the ECU. Nice looking little unit. Composite. It's not metal or anything, but it's composite. It's fine. Pretty durable. A little map sensor plug there that we will not be using. Because it's, I believe this is just a one bar. So, to run boost, I mean, unless you're running like four pounds or something like that. I'm not sure what one bar goes up to, but I fully intend to be going far above one bar. I ordered a three bar. I'm hoping that's going to be enough. I don't think I'm going to be pushing boost past that. I think three bar goes up to 30 pounds, I believe. I definitely don't see pushing 30 pounds. I mean, maybe 20 because this is going to be a stock bottom end and when i say stock i mean stock gen 3. i do not have gen 4 rods and pistons in my engine so that might start out a little little sketch But yeah, that's the uh, that's the Terminator X. Uh, I like it. I mean, everything looks really good. I mean, it's packaged very well. Everything looks. I mean, it's holly. I wouldn't expect anything less. I mean, it's all good quality looking stuff. So there you go. That's the Holly AFI Terminator X. Now this is the 550903. This is for the uh, EV1 injectors on a 24 tooth uh, LS, I believe. If I didn't get that right, I'll 
note it in the video there. But yeah, there's that, and we will move on to the next box. All right, so what we have here, like I said, we got uh, ICT Billet LS Swap Solutions. You may already know, I can't go there so y'all can't track my stuff. You might already know what this is, just based on the size of the box. Pretty common for LS Swaps. Hey, uh, I told y'all this knife was dull. But, got her handled. Alright. Bam. ICT billet. That is my valley cover plate. You can see it's stamped ICT billet there on the bottom. Nice finish. Bolts are attached in there. I'll use this with my factory gasket. Throw that dude on there and we will be golden. Knock sensor delete. Apologize for my dog barking in the background. He's kind of an asshole. But that's okay. Toss that box to the side. Set that to the side. And move on to the next package. This is something, if it is what I think it is, which I'm pretty sure I know exactly what it is, some of you may call me cheap for. But, I do know that I've seen and heard of many people using these with no problems whatsoever. I've also heard of numerous people running just factory ones. And not using these and also having no issues. But these are my head studs. I mean, it's all, it's bolts, guys. They're made from hardened steel. Just like ARP is. So we're going to use these, and if I don't have any issues, then I'll say, I told you so. If I do have any issues, then you guys can say, I told you so. But we're going to try them and see. If they don't work, I'll just go buy our ARPs. No big deal. But I am trying to do this truck on a budget. So that was budget number one. Okay, here we go with this box. It's a little heavy. I think I know what it is. If I if it is what I think it is, it's electrical. So find out here in a second if what I think it is. And yes, I can see that it is exactly what I thought it was. And what I thought it was is my two gauge power cable. To expose your adhesive, remove liner. Not sure why they left that in there, but thanks. I don't need that. So, two gauge power cable. Now you notice this is nice and flexible. This isn't regular battery cable. This is welding cable. If you guys don't know, welding cable actually works a lot better for wiring batteries because it transfers the power so much better than using like a uh let's say like a speaker wire kit the 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 amp wire that those come with these are stranded a lot finer so you get a lot less loss which is how i can run a two gauge instead of running like a zero gauge or something like that 
Well, you can see it's number two welding cable made in the United States of America. Kind of funny, I just showed y'all some Chinesium head studs, and then I go to some badass welding kits made here in the U.S., but it is what it is, and that's what we got. That should be enough to ground and power the entire car. So that's what we got there. Set that down over here. Figure I'll go ahead and show you guys this since I didn't really show it in the video before. But this is my TCI Outlaw shifter that I got from my buddy. This is set up for the TH400, which is what I'm running. It's a reverse manual valve body setup. So whenever it's in gear, I can just bam. Works nice, good condition. I think it's gonna work out great. But yeah, I may end up swapping this cover out for one with a button on it. So possibly I could put my trans brake button there or possibly my line lock button if I run a line lock. I may not run a line lock. Simply because I really don't want to have too many buttons inside the truck. Especially since I plan on driving this thing a lot. Alright now, for this Mogambo Jegs box. I'm going to bet that this box has boxes inside of it. Here, I'm going to set this down, guys. Alright, first. Oh! Almost just busted my face. That would have been awesome. So, yeah. You see what we got here? We got the Atomic Cool remote cooler from Durrell Performance. Hoping I said that right. Bam. Look at that. This is the, the Dash 8 fittings, which is what I'm running on my transmission. There's dash 8 lines coming out of it, so I figured just keep it simple and I'll run dash 8 into the cooler as well. No problem. see what this box is. Fuel system. Alright, so here is what we have. I got 15 feet of dash 8 times 2. Probably more than what I'm going to need, but that's fine. I'm sure I'll find uses for it other, elsewhere. I'm sure I've got friends that may need some, but I wanted to make sure I had enough. Because this is going to be uninterrupted from the engine all the way back to the fuel cell. And then I also needed some to run the transmission cooler. 
So I went ahead and got two, two of the eight gauge, or eight gauge, dash eight. And that's gonna be my return. This is dash 10. Dash 10. This is what is going to be my feed. So I'll run it from the fuel cell uh, into the pump, from the pump up to the Y fitting, which will then go into a dash eight into each side of the fuel rail. Speaking of the Y, here is my dash 10 to dash eight Y fitting. That's 10 to 8. I got 10 here, 8 out. That's going to go to the fuel rail. I have got, see, this should be a dash 10 to a dash 8 adapter. That's going to go on the fuel cell to run my return into it. Because the fuel cell I ordered has dash 10 bungs on it. Let's see. Two. So I got two of these. I thought I ordered more than that. I thought I ordered four of these. But these are going to come from, yeah, these are from my pump. So I've got a dash in, dash eight ORB or uh, fitting there, and that goes up to a dash 10. So because my pump that I'm ordering has dash 8 inlet and outlet and I want to make sure it ple feeds plenty of fuel I bumped it up to a dash 10 it's not going to hurt anything it's going to get a little bit more volume to it and the rest of these I believe are all dash 10 that's a dash 8 dash 890 so I think those are for the fuel rails like another dash 8 Another dash eight. I don't remember what all I had all this planned for, but I remember that I did did have everything planned out on paper. That's a dash eight straight hose end. That's a dash eight straight hose end. Okay, so yeah, my order's definitely short. I didn't get any of my dash ten hose ends. Everything that I got is dash eight. All right, these are my 45, well, one of my 45. Yeah, there's two of my 45s. Those are for the transmission lines. I got one. One dash 10 to come out of the, out of the fuel cell. And then I got my dash 10 to run from the fuel cell to the or excuse me from the filter to the pump instead of running a line in between I'm just gonna run this so it'll go straight from fuel cell there'll be a little bit of a line run into the filter and then from the filter to this and then from this to the pump no big deal piece of cake and this is my filter E85 uh, stainless steel mesh filter because I will be running corn in this truck so that is a 100 micron filter plenty of filtration the pump that I ordered I'm running a uh, a magna fuel 7303 and it calls for a I believe a 75 pre filter and a 25 post filter I've heard a lot of people don't run the post filter I've actually seen a lot of setups that don't run the post post filter so because Jags doesn't have a 75 I just ordered a hundred 75 and 25 is 100, so bam, there it is. Good enough, keeps the gunk out of the fuel. 
keeps that out of my pump. And that is it. That's what we have so far. So, <clears throat> realized I forgot a box. So, just to finish off this video, see the name on this box Monkey Fab Garage. They make a lot of turbo components to uh, help install turbos, which is exactly what this piece is. A component to help me install turbo. What this is my T6 flange. Very nice piece. You can see it's nicely welded on the inside. One less thing I gotta worry about. It's mild steel, so I can just uh, MIG weld it. Get the Monkey Fab logo on there, as well as the additional spots to mount it. It's three inch, so my collector will come in coming from the manifolds to the collector or I'll wire them into each other and then into that that's monkey fab garage sticker okay that was actually legitimately the final box this time so there you go guys, whenever I get some more boxes in, I will be right back with you. I may actually do a little bit of work and update you on some progress whenever I get that work done. But yeah, man, that's, that's really nice. It's not real heavy either. It's nice. Uh, but yeah, till, uh, Till I get some more stuff in or actually make a little bit of progress. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.